Adding a simple border to your design can sometimes be that extra added element to help grab the viewer's attention, but how do you add borders in Canva? What are the different methods? What's the right method to choose? Well, we're gonna cover all that in this video along with that extra step you should always keep in mind when you're creating assets like this. So let's jump right into it. In this video, I'm covering six easy methods for creating borders in Canva. So we'll go over the diff different methods, the pros and cons of each uh, method, uh, when you might want to use one, when you might want to use another. And then if you watch to the end of this video, I'm also going to tell you the next step, the next step you need to take after you understand these different methods. Because understanding these different methods is really going to make it so you can really easily bring extra interest to a photograph, to a design page, just by using these borders. Okay, so let's get started. The first option and often the easiest option to implement is the built-in border option on images. So if you just click on an image inside of Canva, you're gonna see this up here where you have a border style which you can select along with a border color. And then you have additional things like corner rounding. So let me just select on border style for to begin with. Obviously if you take the border weight down to zero, it's gonna disappear, but you can bring up that border thickness. You can come up here and you can change the border style. And then of course you have options here for changing the border color so we can make that blue. And then we have additional options here for corner rounding if we want to start to round the edges, okay? So this is a built-in option that you're going to find on images. And not only images, but you can also apply this to shapes and graphics as well. But what are the pros and cons of this method? Well, as mentioned, one of the biggest pros and obvious reasons why you would choose this method is just how easy it is to implement. You just click on whatever image you want and then you have all the options up there and you can very easily vary that size, the color, the style, the roundness of that border. So super easy to implement, gives you a lot of options you can very quickly apply. But what about the cons, the reason why you might not choose this method? Well, there are some drawbacks, so let's talk through some of those. Uh, the first is when you start to add uh, rounded corners, at a certain point, this breaks down. So if I come up here under the border style here and I start to fold with this border weight, you can see when I have it all the way out here, I have this nice rounded edge and then the rounded photo portion here sort of matches up with that. But as I start to adjust the weight and make that bigger and bigger, at a certain point, I get a square corner here, which I don't love when I still have that rounded edge here. So there just are some limitations as we start to apply these styles as to how far far you can push it, how far it actually can be applied and still look good. So there are some limitations in that respect. Also, if you have a photo or an element where it's removed from the background, you are not going to be able to add a nice border around that element because when you use the border option in that case, it's going to adhere to the blue bounding box that you get around your element. So when you select it and you see that blue bounding box, so if I select this here and I come up here and I go ahead and drag this border weight all the way down, we can see I have this blue bounding box. Even though this is cut out, you're still going to have a rectangular shape. And so then when you come in here and add to the weight, you're going to get this rectangular border around it, not a border that sort of follows your subject around so that might not be what you want you might want a border that comes around your subject here and then the third con here I would say the reason why you might not choose this border method is just because you're you can add fairly basic borders with this method you can add the dotted lines you can round it a little bit it can be a solid color line but you cannot get really creative and have sort of grunge effects and various other borders, which you might want to add to your design. So this method is great when you want to implement something quickly. It's a rectangle shape to begin with, or maybe a circular frame. It's going to work in that instance, and you can very quickly apply something, make some slight modifications. But when you want to get more advanced, maybe this isn't the method you want to use. Just a quick interlude here, then I'll get you right back to your video. But if you do like my teaching style and you like learning about Canva graphic design and entrepreneurship, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and you can also sign up for my free newsletter and get access to a lot of free resources that are going to help you on your journey so i will place a link in the pinned comment down below where you can access all those resources and sign up for that newsletter Second method for easy borders in Canva is just using Canva elements to act as your borders. So if I look at the element on screen here, now I can click on it and I can see that I actually just have this border effect, this frame in front of my image. So you can drag it over top here and now you have these cool grunge borders on your image. And you can find elements like this by searching for things like borders, frames, more specific terms like grunge borders. So search for whatever you like over here in the elements tab. Let's just start with real simple searching for borders. So I can search for borders 
over here, see a whole bunch of different options. So let's just go under the graphic options here. And I have some very basic things like this. Uh, so I could grab this one here. I could reposition it. Now, a lot of times one of the limitations here is if you do try to resize this, a lot of times it will have these locked proportions here. See, if I try to do this here, it's actually going to just kind of crop that. So you don't necessarily want that. But then what I could do is I could come over here. Let's just get rid of my other border set here. So let me delete that. So there's actually a couple different elements I combine together. Let me just get rid of those. And then what you could do is you could come on here and to get your photo to work, you could crop in on your photo just so your photo dimensions are now something uh, that work with your frame. And then of course, if I wanted to come in here and change what's showing there on my photo, I could come in here and sort of grab her and move her around, get her better centered in the frame. So you have all sorts of different options here when you come over and you search. And of course I just did border here, but you could do something uh, totally different. So I could even search for something up here like puppy and go ahead and find a little image of a puppy here. And let me just grab this real quick and size this down just to move it out of the way for a second. Uh, because when I, then I'll, what I'll do is I'll just take this here. I'm gonna size this way down. Let's move it up here. Let's just make a bunch of copies. So I'm just gonna hold down the Alt key on my keyboard while I drag out a few. And let's just take the whole thing again, Alt, drag out, just grab them all again, Alt, drag out, grab them all again, Alt, drag out. Let's just come in here and size these down so that the front uh, one is there and get it to space evenly across that. And then I'll scale it all up to here so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. I'm gonna scale it all up. But with all these selected, then I could come in here under my position. I could come under my spacing here and just make sure that they're evenly arranged and then group them back together. And so this is gonna be my new border. Let's get rid of the border that's on top here. We'll drag this into the center of the screen just so we can see a little bit better. We're gonna put that there. And then we're gonna hit Alt to grab a copy down there. And then of course I could do something similar on the sides there. So I know it takes a little while and you wouldn't necessarily always wanna do this, but I'm just showing you, you really can take any elements and create them, uh, turn them into border elements. Now, of course, if you spent something uh, doing something like this that took a lot of time because it made sense for your brand and what you, type of content you created, then you would want to make sure you saved your final asset so it was a reusable asset that you could quickly access in the future. And we'll talk about that at the end of this video. So one of the pros of using Canva elements like this is that you can often very quickly find good assets just by coming up here using this element search bar. So maybe search for something like borders. And then of course you can combine that with search filters up here to even uh, more quickly find what you're looking for. So if you only want to animate assets, you could click this on, see the assets here, and then suddenly you're seeing all those assets assets uh, that are animated. So very quickly you can come in here and find some cool options. Another argument for using Canva elements is just with the vast number of Canva elements, you can search and you really can turn any element into a border effect. So you really do have tons and tons of options because you have tons and tons of Canva elements to choose from. Now, some reasons why you might not want to use Canva elements for your borders. Well, as mentioned, it sometimes can be more time consuming than other methods because you are sometimes going to have to search for elements. Sometimes you're going to find individual elements that you're then building into your frame or your border. So if you have to do something like that, it could take more time. And of course, with cutout shapes, again, it doesn't always work well because then you're probably going to spend even more time going around and trying to create that border element. So again, can be really effective, but you have to pick and choose when you're gonna use this method. The third method is just using basic shapes and you can easily create a border by adding any shape behind your image. So right here on screen, we have this image here and behind it, I just have this rectangle with this gradient here. So if I delete that, anytime you have an image like this, you can just tap R on your keyboard to bring up a rectangle. And then you can go ahead and take that until it snaps to the center of your image like that. And then I can use the alter option key when I drag down from one side, drag down from the other side. I can give this any color I want. Let's just set it to blue for starters. And then I could use my control plus bracket keys. That would be command plus bracket keys on Mac, control on Windows, and just bump that backwards. And then come in here and sort of clean up the spacing. Again, using that alt so I can size from the center outward and pull two handles at once. Uh, and very quickly, you can create borders like this. And of course, you can change that color to anything you want here, just coming under here to the color tab here. You can even set this to a gradient. So if I wanted this to be a gradient, I could do something like that that and very quickly add a border using shapes. Now, the pros and cons of this is this method is actually a lot more flexible than you realize. 
because you can add a circle frame where you have an image in it, then you can just add a circle using that C keyboard shortcut with uh, rectangles, just the R keyboard shortcut. It'll add a square, you can resize it behind your image. You can do a lot by combining different shapes together here behind your images. Very quickly, you can add a border. And it is actually more flexible in some ways than using that border image that's built in. So let me give you an example of that here. If I take this one here, I'm just gonna drag out a copy of this. Let me just get rid of the stuff on this side of the screen just for a second here so we can see. So if I came in here and I use this border option here, suddenly when I add the border, weight you'll notice that it builds the border in inwards and I also can only go to so thick but it builds it inwards and it starts to take up my image well with the shape here I can really do anything I want I can build outwards I can make it taller at the top it's not uniform all the way around so you just have a lot more options in some respects when you use this basic shape methodology versus using this built-in option that you have and then the cons for using this method, once again, it does not conform around cutout shapes. So I think this is an interesting effect on screen right here using this basic shape with the gradient. But if you did want something that conformed around her hair and around her body here, then this is not the method to use. And again, this is for basic shapes. It does not work for more complicated borders. So not the choice for every instance. The fourth method we're gonna talk about for creating borders in Canva is the shadow effect method. So this is gonna be something you find under the edit menu under the shadows option. So let me just show you how it works. So you click on a photo here and this would be for something uh, with the background removed. Again you, you, again, you could do this with something like this. So I could just come under the edit menu now without removing the background. And I could come under shadows and come under this outline option and start to add a border that way. But usually that's not really gonna give you advantage over some of the methods we talked about. So usually you're gonna do this for a photo where you remove the background. So I'm gonna click on this woman here. We're gonna use background remover. We're gonna get rid of that background. And then we're gonna come under the edit menu, choose shadows, and then we're gonna apply this outline option. So again, you can change the size and then you can come in here and you can change the color to whatever you want. So let's choose something in the blue tone like that. And then very easily, we've added, added a shadow around our image. And not only that, the shadow is conforming to the shape of that cutout. So that's the advantage of this. We're adding it to the shape of that cutout. Now this one here, I actually have two borders. All I've done here is stacked two together. So if I ungroup, you can see that we've just stacked two together so we can get the two different colors there. So with all these methods we've talked about and I'm going to talk about, you can of course always combine methods, stack methods together to be as creative as possible. So the pros of this shadow outline method as mentioned, you now can get something to conform around a cutout subject. That's not something we were able to do previously with those other methods, so that is a real advantage here. There is also a way you can do this with text, so when you click on text, if you go under the effects menu, there's a similar option under text. I'm just using this outline option here, so you have this option for text as well, and what's nice is that you have this option for text that is still editable, so whenever we have a workflow where we can keep something non-destructive and still editable, that is very helpful. Now for the cons of this method, it definitely still is a little bit finicky and you don't have unlimited options. I showed you this example before where I got a double border sort of by grouping two images together, but I couldn't just do that natively under the tool by adding multiple outlines. You can only have the one outline around an image. And then again, something I don't like about that is if I come in here under that shadows menu, if we watch the image here as I bring up the size of this outline, once again, it is sizing the image in rather than building outwards. So because of that, it's more finicky and because of that, it's harder to line up here and get equal distant borders. I can come in here and try to get it so that my borders are sort of equally uh, spaced and I have equal spacing in all areas, but it definitely is finicky. It doesn't work perfect. So you can spend a little time, you know, tweaking with that, trying to get multiple borders. So it's good for some things, but not perfect for everything. So the fifth method I want to talk about is the Canva frame method, and that's where you just add a frame behind your image. So if I look at this image here, directly behind it, I have a rectangular frame. So I actually have something in here. I can detach that video. I just had a video in that frame, but now we can see there was just a frame here. So I can drag anything into that frame, and then it can act as a border around my image because I'm having that frame stretch just beyond the areas of my photo. So now if I play this here, we can see that we actually have this add animated border around our image and this is very cool because you can come under the elements tab and just very quickly you can search for something and then very very quickly you can just come in here and you can use any element you want as your frame 
even something like a video. So that is the big pro out of this method. We can see all the variety on screen that right now. You can very quickly drag any photo, any video into your frame and have a totally different border. So endless, endless options from static to animated. So this is a really cool method for building out borders in Canva. And of course, you can continue to employ all the Canva tricks you know. So here in this instance, I've used a different star shape frame, but I've just duplicated it a few times stacked on top of each other. So again, there is a lot of versatility in this method. You can still do things like stacking frames. So you take one frame that's one shape, you add in the photo you want, then you make it slightly bigger, and then you use that slightly bigger frame in the background for your animated asset or just whatever asset you want to be that border around that frame and that image. Now, of course, this method isn't perfect. You're still limited by the variety of frames you're gonna find in Canva. So of course, when you cut an image out, you're not gonna find a frame that fits perfectly around it, like that shadow outline technique we saw previously. So it doesn't work for everything. And then also when working with frames, you have to be careful because images will just snap into frames sometimes, which sometimes you want. But when you're trying to put one frame over top of another and stack frames, it can become a little finicky. So again, this is a great method, but it does have some pitfalls and some limitations. So those are just things to watch out for. And the sixth and final method I'm going to mention for creating borders in Canva, and that is using a custom frame. So you can create a custom frame, so any shape you want that you bring back here into Canva, and then you can get something that really specifically does conform to a cutout subject. So if I move this woman here, we can see that I have something behind here, and this is just a frame. You can actually fill, fill frames with an image or a video, but also just a solid color. So I have a solid color in there right now, but we see I can just drop another frame in here. And I actually have a couple of different ones here. So these are just different frames where I've sized out in a different program. And I brought them back in here and I can stack them on top of each other to get a whole variety of different effects. Now, something to watch out for when you have multiple frames like this, I mentioned this before, you do have to sometimes deal with this frame snapping where if you drag one image over another frame, it's gonna to wanna to snap into that frame. Well, there are a couple ways to get around that. First of all, if you keep your mouse cursor uh, sort of outside of the frame below that, it's not gonna snap into it. You can also use your arrow keys to nudge some things around and it's not gonna snap into the frame below it. And then finally, if you hold down your control key, that's control key on Windows, that would be command key on Mac, then you can move something around and it's not going to snap to guides or to frames below that. So you can use that tr those tricks to reposition position something. And when you're using this custom frame methods for borders, you really can create create lots of cool effects. Now, con of this method is that you do have to step outside of Canva to create a custom frame, and it can take some time, but it doesn't have to take a lot of time. If you're not familiar with it on this channel, I have a one minute method for creating a custom frame in Canva where you can use free software. So I will link to that video up above, and I also can place a link down here in the first pinned comment under that video if you want some cheat sheets that show that one minute method for creating your own custom frame in Canva, because Yes, it takes a tiny bit more work, but it can really be worth it in terms of the creativity it can provide you if you're looking to do some of these extra effects. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. You can comment down below if you have any questions about using Borders in Canva or any other Canva questions, and I hope you have an awesome day. Everything I do so instinctive and so passionate. Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective. I got a vendetta against people who patented it. Being negative when you should be getting after it. I got facts over facts over tracks, this and that, spitting slow, spitting fast, I can roast, I can gas, think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past.